sure somebody out there has got a dirty keyboard that looks just like this. Uh, I mean, this is, was a really nice matte keyboard here. But then your fingers, are, you know, you're gross. Humans are gross over time. They always kind of look like this. What is this stuff? Let's see if we can figure that out. Let's go ahead and clean this keyboard with isopropanol. I've read that that's the best solvent. With a clean wipe. And then extract it out and see what it is. What is the finger gross on keyboards? So a clean science wipe is what we need to get started. And I use these wipes called Technicloth. These are woven wipers. I guess non-woven wipers. They're like... I don't know how they make these. But this is what clean room people use. These are like these really clean wipes. So anyways, I'm going to use these. We'll do one with just isopropanol, spray with just isopropanol. The other one will be sprayed with isopropanol and wiped to clean off the keyboard. And we'll extract them both and analyze them. So we've got the squirt bottle. I'm going to just go ahead and fake squirt the isopropanol onto our control and just kind of like get it on my gloves here. So that's a good control. Alright, so now we're going to try to clean this guy. Hopefully it works. Oh yeah. It's getting pretty gross. Already, right away, getting gross. All right, I'm gonna finish this up. All right, wiped it all clean, it went right in, and now we have like kind of a brown tipped, it's like a bunch of brown. I rolled it up. Uh, all the brown parts now I kind of like Hold it up into a tube and I'm going to cut it off with this razor blade. I'm going to do the same thing with the control and then we'll have two tubes, kind of full of some wipe, clean and not clean. You can tell the difference in the color of the wipe inside the tube. On the right we have the dirty wipe, on the left we have the control clean wipe. I'm going to extract it with uh, two parts isopropanol, one part acetonitrile, and then put it on direct injection. I got the solvent in there but it's tough to extract the bottom because it's a really serious wad of towel. And so we're just going to spin it down in there, in the centrifuge. Yeah, maybe like a minute and a half here, 15,000 RPM. Alright, so we got them off the centrifuge. You see that it's definitely definitely got the liquid down into the solution, now, into the wipe there now. So I'm going to sonicate it, try to extract a little bit more. Right, on to the sonicator. Alright, off the sonicator. Here we go, it's off the sonicator. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to do a 10x dilution and just see the nitrile and then re-spin it back out. Alright, there we go. Look at that. It is some dark liquid there coming out of that wipe. And then we're going to put that in for dilution. And then we're going to spin this back out again. Uh, make sure everything's soluble and that there's no fibers. So, back to the centrifuge. You can tell it is darker on the left there. Alright, off the centrifuge for the second time. Alright, that's probably pelted out nicely. Alright, got the samples in the auto sampler vials. Eleven and twelve. Twelve is the real sample. Under low res, single quad, QDA stack. So we're running this on direct injection method here, positive mode, running the blank first. You can see that's pretty blank for a uh, all right, so now we're on the second sample. You can see there's the keyboard sample coming off. Click and drag to extract the data. And there we go, we have something different. All right, so it looks like the new masses um, are mainly, the new masses are 391, 419, and 447. We're trying to simulate MDB search with lots of air because it's a low res instrument protonated, 391, 419, 447, let's see what we get. So the low res data was not enough. Have to transition to the high res. Zevo QTOF, untargeted, keyboard wipe on that, fast EDA method for fragmentation. 
So there's the cluster of uh, peaks that I'm interested in right here. You can see that's where they're kind of coming out. And if we look at the blank wipes across the same region. You can see that none of them, maybe that's a little bit of carry over there, but pretty much none of these are in the blank. So uh, these are the culprit. And they're all like, Shifted by about 28, 28. All right, HMDB results. I think I'm finally seeing it. I was getting confused by these biomolecules that didn't fragment. I kept thinking it was being something from our finger. Like in my finger, it's something from my finger. So I was looking for biomolecules and I was ignoring this molecule here. So when you search this formula, so I'm pretty confident in that formula being right. I search that formula, it actually hits this bis ethyl phthalate, B-E-H-P, that's a plasticizer. So if we go down to the 419 mass, you can see that we're now hitting this plasticizer. Ignore the biomolecules again. It seems like what they have in common is that they're plasticizers. This is D-I-N-P, another plasticizer. All right, let me see if we can go down to the next one and see if this is also, and sure enough, look at that. So I think these are plasticizers, and they're long hydrophobic plasticizers that are barely soluble in water, and they accumulate, and they're from food contact materials, and cookware, and food wrappers, and everything, it's a plastic coating that's on everything. And so I think we have, I think the molecules are DIDP, DINP, and DHEP uh, plasticizers. Um, so it's kind of scary because these things are really not the best for you. It seems like the goo that accumulates on your keyboard as you type for long periods of time is not something from your fingers, but actually something from the plastics themselves. And it is a plasticizer phthalate insoluble goo. Ew.